coyotes in camp yesterday morning, just sitting out having coffee. Okay, we're getting here. We're leaving. Oh, Jesus. Fingers crossed we don't get turned away. Well, I got the orange cone. I'm done. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. We uh, just made a quick stop because we wanted to take some pictures of the graffiti. One in particular caught our eye on the way back, on the way down. But we're going to get some supplies, uh, a few groceries, maybe some water, some gas, and maybe some lunch. better than one. It's a lot wider, most of it, you know. I mean, there are exceptions, but it's wide, it's smooth. We drove the worst part of all the roads in Mexico, uh, in Baja, from Bahia de Los Angeles uh, down to Guerrero Negro. That section is terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. We drove it like 10 miles an hour. It's just potholed and it's a mess, but smooth sailing now. It's amazing how diverse the terrain has been in Baja. There, a lot of diversity here. Oh, look at So a kilometer is six tenths of a mile. So you know how like you're on a large long road trip and it's like 320 miles and then you go like forever and it's like 317 miles. <laughs> Here the kilometers go by a lot faster. We were just at like 118 to Puerto Citos and now we're at like 78. So it goes twice as fast. It literally goes almost twice as fast. perception is that it goes twice as fast because the numbers are going down twice as fast. You know what I mean, right? The Akatia are blooming. Wow. I honestly don't know if I have ever seen Akatia in full bloom like this. At least not this many. It's like a sea of red. It's beautiful. I don't, I, yeah, maybe I've seen one or two here or there, but this is really beautiful. Especially up against the blue water. Oh no, is the market closed? Uh, Cruise America just passed me. I didn't know Cruise America was allowed in Mexico. Okay. Interesting. Cruise Mexico. Sarah and Aaron had an issue last time trying to play with pay with Visa. I'm gonna go on the other side. Hola, puedo pagar con tarjeta? No, it's only cash. Only cash? Yeah, no internet. No internet. 
Um. This is pretty typical of the small stores we see in our travels in Baja. They're usually in places where there are small communities of Americans and Canadians and they have a little bit of everything. Try to serve the community. Produce is not very good in these places. They're kind of out of the way, but they've got some clothes. Oh yes, definitely. Souvenirs, a little bit of everything. You don't need me sign? Okay, oh. okay. <laughs> perfecto. Oh, sí, ahí probamos el programa de con Don Pablo, no, pero eso sí hablo de ahorita. Muchas gracias. Hello, buen día. Hello, buen día. Hello, 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 okay. hello buen día. Buen día. Peter Ficado, Agua? Oh, sí. yes, I... Sadie girl. Come on, come on. Come on. Okay, I got about 15 gallons of water, 60 liters for uh, 660 pesos. 10 pesos a liter. Actually, very good. Got a couple groceries, uh, the gas station, a whole other story. Uh, so I think we're just going to head to camp from here. Yeah, Sarah getting water. No tacos. We were hoping to get some lunch here, but nothing looks open. So the gas station across the way. The same thing happened to Sarah and Aaron on the way down. They they went in there to get gas. There's a sign out front that says they take credit cards. They pulled in and the guy was like, no credit cards. No credit cards. Our internet is down. And Aaron was like, I don't have any cash. Oh, okay. Oh, oh it, it came back up or something like that. So we pulled in there. And the guy comes out. We have no internet. Our internet is down. Our internet provider is down. And uh, I'm like going through my cash to see if I can put some gas in. We only have 98 miles to San Felipe and I'm just below half a tank. But I thought, you know, I might as well fill up so I don't have to worry about it. And the guy was like, I don't know, maybe it'll come back up in 15 minutes. You know, maybe go across the way. Our internet's down. We came over here. Their internet is not down. Uh, we paid with a credit card. We're not playing these games. <laughs> you know, if you're not going to take cards, don't put the sign up. We're sitting here unloading our groceries, and a guy comes over on a bicycle, says our internet is back up. But I think the consensus at this point is like, you know what? We'll, we'll go to San Felipe. I think we'll be fine. So I'm kind of looking forward to getting camp. I don't know. I'm just not feeling driving today. So... Uh, and I'm hungry. I haven't eaten yet. I'm ready to settle on the beach. I guess I can't do math on the spot. I'm sitting here thinking, wait a minute. 10 pesos a liter. That's more than gas. I just paid 10 pesos a liter for water. <laughs> and then I realized, wait, it was a dollar. One peso. One peso per liter. Much better. about the United States. <laughs> uh, being able to get everything uh, that I'm used to getting in the grocery store. Uh, tofu. I bought tofu once here and it was spoiled. So I had to throw it away. Um, kombucha. Haven't had kombucha. I brought some with me, but that only lasted like a week, maybe two. Uh, let me see. What else? I'm missing... Communication. It's really difficult to communicate when you don't speak the language. Uh, that's about it. <laughs>
let me think. There's more I'm missing in the grocery store. What else do I miss about the U.S.? Let me see. That's it. Kombucha <laughs> and tofu. <sighs> and yes, I'm well aware of how that sounds. <laughs> in so many different ways. What am I going to miss about Mexico? The avocados are amazing here. Uh, the people here are so kind and happy and friendly. Um, let me see what else. It feels freer. It feels a lot more free. Uh, it feels like the people kind of are, I don't know. I don't know, like you pull into a spot, like the spot we just left. We were there for over a week. Nobody bothered us. We don't know who it belongs to. The locals went by and waved and smiled at us. Mario came by and collected our garbage one day. <laughs> he literally came by and asked if we had any garbage. He said he was going to the dump. I mean, that's never happened in seven or eight years in um, living in the U.S., living a, a camping on public lands. That has never happened. Nobody has ever come by to collect my garbage. Uh, we gave him a tip, of course, and I don't know if that's the reason he did it. I don't know. Uh, but it does feel freer here. You know, there's, everybody in the world knows that how it, that litigious the United States is. Every country in the world knows that. And every country I have traveled to, I have seen a lot less, uh, a lot fewer restrictions, like less signs about like what you can and cannot do. Fewer no trespassing signs. Uh, fewer stay back. I mean, it's just, that's a fact. It's not bashing the United States. That's a fact. There's a lot less of that in the rest of the world, at least the parts that I've traveled to, uh, than there is in the United States. And so it does feel freer here. Um, people are free to live in whatever they want to live in, it seems. So there's no homeless. You know, if you can build a shack without worrying about zoning and all kinds of stuff, you don't have to be homeless. So I'll miss that. Uh, I'll miss the fish tacos. I'm not going to lie. Oh, especially the place we just had in Santa Rosalita. Best fish, fish and shrimp. It was amazing. Um, beautiful scenery. Friendship. I'm going to miss this camaraderie I've had with my friends, but uh, I am going to miss that. It's going to be interesting. I've been with people for months now, so uh, going back out on my own here pretty soon. So that'll be uh, an adjustment for sure. I'm looking forward to it in some ways, some ways, but I am looking forward to my trip cross country. I don't know if you're going to be able to see Oh, it's those two little islands. There we go. Look at that. the freedom that Sadie has. I mean, just now we got out, she ran around, ran into the store. Nobody cares. Uh, she's been to church here. <laughs> that was a whole fun video of controversy. Uh, she can, you know, she's allowed in, in all the outdoor restaurants. Uh, there have been a couple food establishments that she, she was not allowed to go in. And, uh, I'm gonna miss. I'm gonna miss all the good baked bakeries, the panda that he is, but I'm not gonna miss them also because I need to stop eating so much junk. Um, yeah, it's just been a wonderful trip. Wonderful people, wonderful country. The other thing I miss about the U.S. is the price of gas. It's been five seventy, five eighty. It's been a lot here. So a gallon, so it's been really high. It'll be nice to get back and pay lower prices again.
Perfect. Oh, wow. All the flies are terrible. Got it. Yes. Look at all the fish jumping. Oh my goodness, the flies are terrible. Wow. They're just, oh my gosh, they're everywhere. Look what she found. You gonna bring it and I'll throw it. Bring it. I'll get up and throw it. Let me just sit him another minute and watch the fish. Fish are busy, man. They're hopping everywhere. I hope they're catching these terrible little flies. Look at, oh, did you see that one? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> they fly so far through the air. How do they do that? Let's see if we can catch another one flying high through the air. Oh, my gosh. Except it's hard to hold the phone because the flies are crawling on my arms. See, he wants to play. Huh? 
Okay, you gotta get out of the way. I don't want to hurt you by hitting you. Okay, go that way. It's heavy. I can't throw it very far. And I'm afraid I'm going to conk you in the head. Check it out. Wow, this thing weighs like... I don't know, five pounds. Look at how big that is. It's the biggest one I found. I'm trying to film it and hold coffee. Look at that. <laughs> wow. I like the insides of them. They're so pretty, the spirally. Wow, that is a big one. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Beautiful. Wow. I thought on this end of the beach I was walking toward, I thought it would be ruins oh, of a community. You know what I think it is? Oh my gosh, look. And it looks like the wash just came right up and washed it away. The 2011 hurricane and Hillary last year did a lot of damage in Baja. Somebody's fifth wheel. Wow. Eventually, Mother Earth is going to reclaim all of us, isn't she? <laughs> mm-hmm. One way or another. Wow. Well, somebody was living here. So I wonder if the floodwaters brought all this out? It's hard to believe. I think somebody... Look at it. <laughs> Coconut bowl. Wow. Or did somebody just dump their garbage here? That's another possibility. Yeah, all this stuff didn't come out that door in, in water, right? High tide hurricane. Oh, look it. Yeah, oh, look it. Oh, this probably used to be a campground. You see this? Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> yep. This used to be a campground. And the hurricane ruined it. One of the hurricanes. I would say the first one, 15 years ago, wait, 2011, 13 years ago. Wow. This was the holdout. <laughs> this was the person who said, I'm not leaving, I'm staying with my home. And there's, as far as I can tell, there's no dead body in there, so... Of course, I'm not going to go look. <laughs> but I'm thinking, well, also it looks like it's on a concrete foundation. I'm thinking either any other people who were camped here. Wow. Oh. Thinking anybody else who was camped at this campground got out or it was washed away. I suppose. Oh, that fifth wheel. Fifth wheel. They might have been parked here. Holy cow. Or maybe that was part of the campground, too. Because this was all washed out. You can see it. Two of my favorite things right here. Abandoned places, although, you know, the washing out and the storms are tragic for people. And it's kind of weird that everything just, well, it stays abandoned. Because who wants to build here again, right? I mean, hurricanes are getting worse and more frequent. But, uh, I mean, I get to explore abandoned places in a foreign country. <laughs> How fortunate am I? Cynthia, I forgot that word you used again. <laughs> I have a mental block on that word. Enchanted. I have a very enchanted life. I do. I do. Look at this beautiful morning. New camp on the Sea of Cortez. Where are we? About an hour and a half south of San Felipe. 
really having mixed feelings about leaving. Um, kind of like, why am I leaving? But I need to. Oh, is he crashing? Oh no, he's doing tricks. He's showing off. <laughs> I thought he was crashing. He's showing off. <laughs> I was like, that would suck. I don't really want to see somebody die today. I realize how selfish that sounded. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I'm going to get a lot of shit for that, aren't I? I'm going to leave it in just to really upset some people. So, at first thought, at first thought, Ooh, how cool would that be? You get to fly! But imagine, you gotta listen to that the whole time you're up there. You know me and noise. I don't know if it, I think it would be fun to do once. Imagine how loud that is. Up there, right behind you. Hard to believe I used to be a huge Metallica fan. Metallica, Green Day, Black Sabbath. <laughs> and now I'm like, I wouldn't want to do that because it's so loud. I've seen all of them in concert. <laughs> now I can't even go to a movie theater. So partly age, I guess, and partly my life, the way I live now. Different person, different uh, chapter of my life. Yeah. See our camp down there. We pulled in yesterday. I think it was like three o'clock by the time we got here. There was nobody here. And uh, Sarah and Aaron were leading, so they found that spot. And I was trying to decide where I wanted to go. And the one right looked nice and big and somewhat level. And I pulled in and I'm like, if people come down here, they're going to be camped right here, right behind me. And then I pulled over to that other one. And I'm like, same thing. If I camp there, this is a great spot. People are going to come in and and sure enough, <laughs> uh, not long after we pulled in, a guy in a minivan pulled in right here, and then a truck camper pulled in right there. So that's another tip for you. Watch out where, if you think it's a great spot, other people are going to think it's a great spot. And uh, if you want to be, if you want quiet and you don't want people right out your back window, you know, my back window is my bedroom window, so. Man, I missed him flying away. But it's a uh, layover spot, so everybody's out pretty early. Oh my gosh, not a bad spot. So I expect we're going to get company probably every night, and then they'll be gone early in the morning. So look at this. I mean, come on. Everywhere we go, this is what people do. Even in the desert in Arizona, you like collecting them, but you don't want to take them with you. So you just leave them for other people to enjoy. Whoa.
dolphins out there. I don't know if you're going to be able to see them. We just watched them pass. A couple dozen of them. Look at it. You can barely see them. You're not going to be able to see them. <laughs> so cool. Sea of Cortez. All right, our last morning here. It's time to mosey. It's Friday. We're heading to San Felipe. And uh, the goal is to cross the border on Sunday. See how that goes. <laughs> and uh, it's been beautiful here. A lot of coyotes here, so I'm super, super on guard. Uh, we had a pack of coyotes in camp yesterday morning, just sitting out having coffee. Sadie saw them first <laughs> and came running to me. That's it. She came over, and Sarah was like, what? Because she came over, uh, and she was next to Sarah, and her hair was standing up, and she, I mean, she was just out here doing her thing, and she came running over, which she doesn't do. <laughs> and Sarah, I saw Sarah get up and look around the corner. She was like, oh, what? And a pack of four coyotes standing right there. And uh, Sadie came running to me. <laughs> so... When everybody freaks out about, it freaked me out. I'm not going to lie. That was something scary. And now I'm totally on guard. Um, they were sizing her up for sure. And they heard our voices. Uh, she's chased coyotes, you know. I mean, this is her life. And one thing I realized, I have realized, is that she's never lived. She's less domesticated. Sure, she is domesticated, but she's definitely less domesticated than most traditional dogs. And her instincts are freaking amazing. I didn't teach her half the stuff she knows, just instinctually. And instinctually, she knew those coyotes were dangerous, and she came running to me. <laughs> uh, some might say I'm, I'm re just really lucky, and some might say I just really have a great dog who understands things that we don't even understand that she understands. Um, maybe I am just lucky, but I also really just think that the way she lives her life, she's more in tune to her instincts and, and what's dangerous and what's not. And uh, she came, she ran to me. She ran to me. She, and I don't know if it was to protect me, to alert me, uh, because she was scared, but she is staying closer today. But that's also because last night we went out, you know, I've got my leash uh, and I put her on a leash and I wanted her to see them and not react. So they, they lingered for a while and I put her on the leash and, uh, kind of just stood there and tried to get her to not react to them. She, once I, I was there and she was on a leash, she was a little re like she charged a couple times, <clears throat> um, but I just said, no, look at me, look at me and gave her a treat and just try to teach her to not be reactive to them at all, which I don't even really have to do because she wasn't reactive. But we've seen a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of coyotes in Baja. More, I've seen more coyotes down here than I've probably seen in the last, probably maybe even my whole RV life. I've seen a lot. They're everywhere. And um, <clears throat> they weren't afraid of us. Four coyotes just stood there staring at us. They weren't afraid of us. I'm not afraid of a pack of coyotes with two people but um, they're not going to attack us. But they were sizing up Sadie, that's for sure. <laughs> but uh, So it's another reason I'm looking forward to getting out of here, uh, you know, because I'm totally, totally on guard. They know she's here now. They know that we were there. Uh, pack of coyotes is the most dangerous thing. I'm not worried about one coyote. I've seen her chase coyotes. What they do is they lure them into the pack, and, and that's when they get them. I think they can take down cows. So uh, they were definitely sizing Sadie up. And uh, 
yeah, we're not having that. <laughs> we are. I, I was very grateful. Very, very, very grateful all day yesterday. And now I'm like mama bear with her cub. I just can't say enough. Living on, living the way I live. Having the freedom I give myself and the freedom I give safety, uh, the, the, the freedom I give Sadie does not come without risks. But if I wanted to attempt to keep her safe, attempt, because there's no guarantees, 100% of the time, there's no guarantee she's not going to get attacked on a leash. I've heard stories of dogs getting attacked on leash. Uh, there are no guarantees in life, no matter how many precautions you take. And I would rather have her live a life of freedom. She's got a great life. She's happy. She's well balanced. She's intelligent. Come on, we got to pack up. Come on, we're gonna pack up. Let's go. Good girl. Yeah, see, that's what I want. All right, come on. Good girl. Good girl. having a boondocking obsession. <laughs> I have tire paranoia. I swear my tires look low. And when they're sitting, of course, actually they are kind of low. They get lower when they sit. When you're driving in them, they heat up, the air expands, and they, they fill up. So he said they were, they were at 80, but then he filled them up. It's so hard with the language. But, and I paid him 200 pesos. And he was like, okay. Uh, you know, and I realized, like, in America, supposedly, you can get your air done for free. It is so hard for me to find some place who will air up my tires. The duals are a little easier now. They put kind of sort of these little extensions on them, so they're a little easier than they used to be. You know, you don't have to, like, jack it up and take the tire off at least. So, um, I think it does feel... I don't know if I'm imagining things. They might have been a little low. They were low. They were bulging. But anyway, I just figured I'd rather do it here. Uh, I hear a lot less no here. <laughs> I, I just feel like uh, in the U.S., you know the challenges I find getting my RV uh, worked on. You know, no, we can't lift it. No, you know, OSHA. We got OSHA. <laughs> here they don't have OSHA. <laughs> Whatever you think about that. But, uh... Anyway, it just feels like, you know, they need the money. And so they're like, yeah, we'll find a way to get it done. We'll do it. We will find a way. And uh, I appreciate that. So anyway, I feel good. Got my tires aired up. So I was a little worried about that because I'm always worried about that. And on to San Felipe. Yanteras. So they're called Yanteras and they are all over the, I mean, everybody, everybody 
finds a way to fix tires, it seems, and maybe put in an air compressor so they can fill up tires. They are all over the highways in every, not even in towns. I mean, it just seems like almost everybody down here tries to find a way to make a living, and you can find Yentetas almost everywhere. And I knew that there were a couple in San Felipe because I had found, uh, I'd looked ahead of time on iOverlander, but I really wanted to find one on the way that was going to be easy in and out, you know, San Felipe is a city room space is always an issue and found that nice guy who did it for me right outside of town. He didn't speak any English and uh, I luckily have a cell signal so I was able to communicate using translate a lot of words that I've never used before like even numbers I'm not really good at numbers how many pounds ocho o ochenta ochenta cinco eighty no no ochenta, ochenta in the back eighty in the back and sixty five in the front. Uh, I really am looking forward to practicing my Spanish um, over the next year before we come back. I'd really like to do better. And they're so patient. They teach you. I said uh, one word I said for the rear, and I translated it, and it was actually back. And he was like, no, no, that means back. You know, but he pointed, and the right word is, and he said the right word, and I, yeah, I don't remember what it is. But, you know, so they're, they're very happy to help. Approaching San Felipe with a lot, a lot of mixed emotions. I mean, a lot of mixed emotions. In, in a way, I guess, I don't I was thinking, has it been a vacation? I guess it has, in a way, a working vacation. I mean, it's my life, but it's been an adventure, and that's what it is. I mean, and I've said this a million times, I need adventures to keep me uh, healthy mentally, spiritually, I just, this is just what I need, this is who I am, this is in my DNA, and I did that video a long time ago about, well, sometime in the last year, about uh, the sh sh shocking truth about why people are quitting RV life, and I talked about the boredom, and you gotta shake things up. For those of us who are adventure seekers, you gotta shake things up. Whether you're living in an RV, whether you're living in a homestead, whether you're living in a sticks and bricks, if you're that like me, seeks adventure you gotta shake things up every once in a while and that's what this trip has done for me and I think I think more than anything that's what I've gotten out of it but also just the thrill of being in a foreign country being someplace that so many people have so many misconceptions about and uh, experiencing it being here it's been a lot of fun and just, there's so much ickiness going on in the U.S. right now, you know? There's just so much stress and tension. Yeah, I don't know. And we have a checkpoint. Uh, National Guard. We might have a checkpoint. started. Wow. Oh, everybody's in a darn hurry passing me.
actually, those tents are moving. Northwest. Okay, we're getting, we're leaving. Oh, Jesus, asshole. Yeah, this place is freaking crazy. A guy just literally from this lane cut in front of me to make a right turn. Um, it's crazy. I don't want to be here. They don't want to be here. I went to Campo Turistico to see if we could camp there. They want 600 pesos a night. Don't blame them. Supply and demand. It's a crazy, it's like the beginning of spring break. But we paid uh, 20 the first time, and now they want 35 a night. We're not doing it. It's going to be crazy busy anyway. There's nothing fun here with this kind of madness. So uh, I am currently two and a half hours from the border. And Aaron was just like, let's just cross today. I'm like, okay, I'm game. <laughs> so I'm driving to the border. They're an hour and a half behind me. So I'm not sure what I want to do. First, I need gas. And really, dude, you can't turn off your loudspeaker at the gas station. I have been in this town for like a half hour and I'm already about to lose my mind. It is pure insanity. Very nice. Boy, does that make you feel safe or what? Dude's got a bucket under the hose. The hose must have a leak in it. <sighs> and just like that, Baja 2024, just like that anyway, it's over. Uh, did I tell you? We're leaving. <laughs> it's insane. And yeah, I did tell you all that. So we're leaving. I'm heading uh, towards Mexicali. Oh my gosh. This is where... Oh my gosh. I don't know if you saw that. That's where we camped last time where I got stuck. Racers are everywhere. Because when San Felipe was really bad, when the campground, I was like, okay, well maybe we'll just end up at our boondocking spot. Racers are everywhere. I'm actually excited. I really am. There's so much I need to do. I am uh, gonna drive about an hour and stop and wait for them. Maybe work. See how it goes. I'll let you know when we get there. Oh yeah, but as I was saying, I'm kind of. I am excited about. There's a. I have a lot to do. I need new glasses. I need to get my windshield fixed. I need to get this sound checked out. Another theory checked out. Uh, and I need to start heading east. I want to be, yeah, I want to start heading east ASAP before things start getting crowded for the summer. I haven't seen a Walmart in two months. <laughs> I haven't seen a Walmart or a McDonald's or a Burger King or a Starbucks or a, I feel like they're, I feel like we've seen 7-Eleven haven't seen a Best Buy or a Petco or a Target. <laughs> Nunca.
back together again. It's like almost 5.30 and we're about 50 minutes from the border. To come next year? You want to come back? You were such a good Mexico dog. You're such a good traveler. You're such a good traveler. We're going to go back to our, our country. We're going to go back to the good old U.S. of A. What do you think? You're such a pretty girl. This has been an adventure of a freaking day. <laughs> and we don't know. So we're in line apparently to get to the border. And this is where they might tell us no, according to the reviews I saw. So we're at Mexicali East. It took a bit to get here. Uh, you know, there's a lot of traffic. It's Friday night. And we'll see. Fingers crossed this is, and we can go in here and we don't get turned away. All right, we made it to the turn in. All right, so now we just have to find the FMM office. It's looking good. Yeah, this is where we came in. This looks familiar, okay. Welcome back to the US. Wire, cages, fences. <laughs> oh, Sadie girl, you're okay. It's just a bump. It's just a little bump. Well, maybe not so little. <laughs> oh, look at the sunset. Beautiful. Not quite where we thought we would be. And just like that, everything's in English. Well, English first. Well, I got the orange cone because I told her about the fruits and vegetables that I have. So I have to sit here for who knows how long I'm tired. I want my day to be over. Sadie's tired. She's panting. She's hot.
Denver does. It's been hot. It's like 87 degrees today. I'm done. What a day. So, I'll see you on my next adventure. I don't know what that'll be yet. Talk to you later. Well, if anything's going to run me out of Mexico, it's going to be a bunch of spring breakers, right? <laughs> You can't be surprised by that at all. So how fun was Baja? I hope you enjoyed hanging out with my friendlies and me as much as we enjoyed being there. It was a wonderful time, and I really appreciate you joining me on all of my RV life adventures. It means a lot that you're here. You're going to want to tune in next Sunday because I'm going to go live at 5 p.m. Sunday night, my normal Sunday night time. Instead of a video, I'm going to do a live stream for you. I'm going to talk about everything that you need to do to get ready to go into Baja. I'm going to talk about the paperwork that you need, all of the records that I needed to get, and everything that I needed to do prepared to cross the border. I'm also going to talk about a lot of the resources that I use, things like insurance and what I needed to do to get Sadie ready and the vehicle ready and all kinds of things. So tune in Sunday night, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 Eastern. I will be live to talk about all of the things that you might want to know about Baja and also to answer your questions. I also have a lot of extra footage that I'm going to be posting on Patreon that didn't make it into public videos. You can now join Patreon for free, so check the link in the video description below and join Patreon. I'm going to be posting content that didn't make it into videos from Baja over the next couple of weeks and more. I always have bonus content that I save just for patrons. So, uh, if you like my content, uh, do me a favor, give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And just because you think you're subscribed, go ahead and double check for me because YouTube unsubscribes people all the time. I see it in comments all the time. I want to thank you so much all for being here. I've been making videos as a full-time job for more than seven years now. I just celebrated my eight-year anniversary of RV life. It means the world to me that you enjoy being on these adventures with me. And I hope you enjoyed this premiere. Say hi to me in comments. I'm down there typing away in comments. Say hi, Carolyn. <laughs> so these premieres are fun because we get to come, we get to chat while we watch the video together. But I appreciate each and every one of you for everything that you do to support my work. It means a lot to me. And I'll see you live next Sunday. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. I'll see you soon.